So do you know all the components in your exhaust system? In this video, we're going to look at the different parts of an exhaust system and just help you to come to terms with where the typical bottlenecks and restrictions are in your exhaust setup, just enabling you to free up those restrictions and just maximize the power gains that you've been aiming for. <laughs> Your exhaust system starts at the engine and the pipes that come out of the engine and carry those hot gases away are referred to as headers or the exhaust manifold. Now in older cars they used to be cast from metal and it was very very rough internally and it didn't particularly match up very well with the ports on the side of the engine so there was a lot of scope for turbulence in there and in fact the headers are generally the place you go to if you want to free up some extra airflow in the engine. The velocity of the air coming out of the engine is usually at the highest point through the headers until it starts hitting the exhaust catalysts and the other components within the exhaust system. So just making sure that these are correctly optimized can go a long way to maximizing the exhaust flow through the entire exhaust system. So we're just going to look at all the components of an exhaust system and just flag up some areas where there are typically bottlenecks and restrictions just to help you to maximize your power gains in your tuning project and just to make sure that things that were quite easy to fix have been addressed and dealt with and aren't going to come back and bite you later on in your tuning project. So I hear a lot of people talking about equal length headers on the exhaust coming out of the engine and the idea in people's minds is to make sure that everything is the same length therefore it's traveling at the same rate and it all balances out but actually in reality that's not usually the case. If you've got equal length headers chances are you've had to bend the pipes to make them an equal length and because they're taking a different path it affects the trajectory or the velocity of the air going through that pipe. So it's far more important important to have a balanced header where the airflow is consistent out of each of the cylinders and it's particularly important to just ensure that the header design is spot on especially when you've got an exotic engine like the VR4 or a boxer where the exhaust headers have to take a completely different path just because of the position they are on the physical engine itself. So the first chamber the resonator is actually designed to buffer the pulses of energy coming from the engine itself so you will generally have a resonator to chamber that is about the size of a cylinder and as the air comes out of the engine it goes into the resonator and the compressed exhaust gases will backflow into the exhaust system rather than run back into the engine so you're not upsetting the way the engine is running and you're encouraging those exhaust gases to make a clean exit from the engine so the resonator it looks quite confusing it looks like a maze but actually it's been very well designed just to ensure that the engine is running as efficiently as possible and that it's not upset by the flow of exhaust gases which effectively goes to high pressure to low pressure with creating a little bit of a vacuum along the route as well. So a lot of thought has gone into the resonator and I know I myself took off a resonator in an exhaust that I had um, pretty much because I was skin and I liked the sound the exhaust made but it really didn't do anything for the performance of the engine and the fuel economy was really rubbish but because it sounded louder I convinced myself that it was more powerful and I was making more power so I certainly had more fun with the car even though if I was honest and put it on the dyno I would probably have ruined the fuel economy and ruined the performance but they're not mistakes that you're going to make after watching this video. So in a four-cylinder engine you We'll generally go from four down to one for the exhaust but we've seen setups which go from four to two and then to one in the exhaust you can even have a twin exhaust which goes from four to two and the two carries straight on through the underneath of the car to the rear where the exhaust gases are dumped but the optimum setup depends a lot on your engine where you want the power band and really the, the way the engine has been set up so there is no point in me recommending that you always get a four two one exhaust setup because that would not be appropriate in a lot of cars so do your research carefully but changing from the standard manufacturer headers is generally where you start to see the power gain. So the next point encountered along the exhaust tends to be the catalyst. So this is a, a honeycomb and it's designed to react to the exhaust gases coming out and converting the harmful emissions into ones that are much less toxic and better for the environment. So a lot of people blame the catalyst as a major source of power loss in an engine setup. But actually modern exhausts don't suffer from that much of a restriction 
production. Manufacturers want to make their engines as efficiently as possible. But you can get sports catalysts which flow much better than the standard OEM catalysts. And that's going to be a subject of another video where we're going to look at catalysts and high flow catalysts and sports exhausts in, in a bit more detail. But in this video, we're just addressing the major components in the exhaust. There's two large boxes in most exhaust systems, one at the rear, which is the silencer or the muffler, and one in the middle, which not a lot of people really know what goes on in there. So you would refer to that as an expansion box or a resonator, depending on where you are in the world. Now, the resonator is designed to break up the noise that the engine is making to filter out inappropriate frequencies or undesirable frequencies. And it does that by really creating like mini echo chambers within its construction, just forcing the sound waves to bounce and ricochet against themselves. And that has the effect of creating interference waves that reduce the sound output coming from the exhaust in certain frequency ranges. So it doesn't silence the exhaust. It merely changes effectively the tone and the output of the exhaust at that point. So you can see in this image setup that the exhaust resonator has got a chamber that is completely sealed. It is only there for the exhaust sound waves to bounce into and bounce out of. And the exhaust gases will then flow down into another chamber where a perforated screen at the side will allow some of the exhaust noise to again ricochet off the external wall of the exhaust resonator back in, further eliminating the airflow. So Traveling further down the exhaust, we come to the silencer. So the silencer is actually designed to absorb sound waves. So there's a, a variety of different setups and different designs, but in your typical car setup, the exhaust gases will almost flow through an S shape. You've got two perforated tubes within the silencer, and usually you will find some kind of sound deadening material that has to be obviously heat resistant, and that will absorb some of the sound waves traveling. And by forcing the air into an S shape, you're further adding those interference sound waves as they bounce off each other and cross over. And that really does eliminate a lot of the noise and sound coming out of the exhaust. But this differs a lot from a sports exhaust, which tends to be a straight pipe and the central part has got holes in it. So that central part with holes in allows some of the sound waves to just ricochet off the outer walls of the exhaust through the sound deadening material and reduces the output tone, obviously not as much as your standard factory exhaust silencer, but it does remove a lot of the aggressive, harsh, higher notes from the exhaust. If you're taking your car on the track, you need to think about the sound output. It's not just keeping your car street legal. Most tracks have got some kind of decibel limit that you would not want to exceed. And I spend a lot of my time trying to convince people that although their car is making more noise, it's not necessarily making more power. So we've got to detach ourselves from this inherent notion that we seem to grow up with that Noisy engines are more powerful than quiet engines. And with the advent of the electric car, that's certainly a complete myth that we won't even start to debate or go into. And I'm sure someone's going to put up a comment saying, what about electric cars? They're completely silent. Um, but there you go. I've beaten you to it. I've got it in there first. So the bore diameter makes a big difference to the flow of the exhaust gases as well. So I've got another video coming up that deals with performance exhausts and the best designs for them. And in that video, I'll just explain the importance of velocity and how you lose velocity with larger bore sizes. So it will help you to choose an appropriate bore size for your car tuning project. If you've got a diesel engine, you'll have a diesel particulate filter, which much like a catalyst, it sits in the exhaust. It, it's made up of like a honeycomb and it traps all of the soot particles coming out of the engine, where as it heats up, it burns off those soot particles. And by burning them off, it emits close to zero particles. So as the emissions regulations have got tighter and tighter, diesel cars have got to emit emit smaller and smaller and eliminate those micro particles that they emit as much as possible. If the diesel particulate filter is too far away from the header of the engine, you're going to have problems with it not getting hot enough. And eventually it will clog up, particularly if you only do short journeys. So there's whole sets of issues that come with diesel particulate filters, particularly for the low mileage driver or the driver that doesn't use their car very much. So please boot that like button. It really helps us to get out there. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. If you haven't subscribed, please do so because we'd love you to stay tuned.